today's video we're taking a look at an all new product from Flywoo. Now this is called the Goku FC from the Goku line of products and this is the F411 micro stack which is mainly aimed for 16 by 16 setups such as toothpicks and as well as some whoops. Now there's a lot of really interesting things they've done here about this stack. For example, if you take a closer look at the video transmitter here, this is pretty insane. And what they've done here, I think this is ingenious as well is they've created a video transmitter that can mount to 16 by 16, 20 by 20, and 25.5 by 25.5. So basically 16 by 16, 20 by 20, and the whoop or crazy bee type boards. This will mount into anything. And the reason why they've done it like this is because they have other stacks which come 20 by 20 and also their latest whoop one, which we recently reviewed previously, and you'll be able to put this video transmitter along with it. Now, the way to do that is you could break off these tabs right here. They're made to be broken off, so you can just pop this open and you'll be good to go into that perspective. So this is a very innovative thing and I really, really like seeing here. Now, its overall specs for the video transmitter here is it has pit mode, 25 milliwatt, 50, 100, 200, and 450 milliwatt switchable. So you'll be able to change the output power through the on-screen display because it is using smart audio, which is something really nice. And it even has four addressable RGB LEDs. Check this out, they're right here, one, two, three, four, and you'll be able to run the LED wire, which we're gonna cover how to set up in a bit here. Now this video transmitter takes five volts and it takes an IPEX port connection for the setup and they do provide you with a pigtail. However, what I highly recommend with these, if you do have the space, is to incorporate one of these right here. Now these are the latest antennas from Rush FPV that are IPEX and they also have this latching mechanism or locking mechanism which is just absolutely phenomenal. So let me just try to get this to focus real quick. So you can kind of see that and you see how it locks. It is absolutely beautiful. And if you have the space or luxury of space to be able to incorporate this, definitely think about getting yourself some of these. And I'll have these linked down below. And what's really nice is they actually come in two. So when you buy one, you actually get two in the box here. So it's a really, really great deal. Now let's go ahead and move the video transmitter away. We'll come back to the connection guide in a bit here. Let's take a look at the flight controller. Now the flight controller is 16 by 16. We do have an OSD on board, which is recommended and is a must. We also do have an MPU 6000 gyro here. And they've even managed to put eight megabytes of flash memory. Now it's very far from me, but I think that's it, or that could be the gyro. And this is the memory. I can't really see it from that far, but you're gonna have to excuse me. But anyways, one of those smaller chips is one, one is going to be the gyro, one's gonna be the eight megabytes of flash memory. We're also rocking the F411 microcontroller unit, which is really great. And not only that, they also have eight addressable RGB LEDs right here. That is just insane. So you could choose red, blue, or green on whatever you want. And uh, we might cover that in this video or in a later build video where I replace a current or my favorite quadcopter, which is a 16 by 16 stack with this stack so we can play around with it. However, it doesn't even end there. They also do have an integrated LC filter into this beast, which is really great because it reduces the chances of you getting noise in your video feed. And that is pretty insane that they're able to fit all this stuff into a small board here. And I really like seeing that. Now let's go ahead and move this off to the side and let's check out the ESC. Now also something I forgot to mention, the connection between the electronic speed controller, which is this guy, and the flight controller is through pins. Now some people don't like that, but personally, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, so this is done with pins, so it'll keep your overall build very light and as well as very clean because you don't have to worry about running another connector and having the wire stick all over the place. This just makes a really nice clean fit here. Now filtration looks beautiful and phenomenal for such a tiny 16 by 16 ESC here. And that's really great to see. So they utilize all the space they can in here. And the reason or the way that they're able to do that, usually for each phase, we get two MOSFETs, one of these guys. We get two for each phase or each wire of a motor gets two FETs. But what they've done here and what they're usually doing with these tiny boards is they're incorporating kind of like a dual MOSFET. So this has basically two FETs in each FET here. So that's really nice to see here. So we have one, two, three. We're gonna, we're gonna have a total of 12 because we do have 12 motor outputs, but basically each one of those is two. So we basically have 24, so two for each phase. So that's also something really nice to see. And they're rated for 13 amps, 15 amp burst. And the input voltage on all this setup is two to four S. So if you're looking for a one S 
brushless setup this is not the board for you and keep that in mind now for the esc protocol they're using they're using the dshot 600 maximum so it is a beal heli s esc rocking the bb2 chips the mounting hole is m3 so they're three millimeter holes however once you put these rubber grommets here they go down to two millimeter which is really great because most of these are running two millimeter holes especially frames that accommodate a 16 by 16 stack such as this right here now another really nice thing about this is the price it's only 50 bucks which is pretty crazy because you know the, the older crappy crazy bee boards were, were going around the 40 dollar range and without a video transmitter and here you get everything for 50 dollars that is a great deal that is amazing and they're not overpricing their products and i really love seeing that and i can't wait to see more of what fly is doing here they came in as a no-name brand i remember when i first got one of their products what the hell is this and now look today what they've brought us this is just absolutely phenomenal here and good going fly Woo. so let's go ahead and cover how we would go about setting this up in a quadcopter first thing we want to do is we want to grab our electronic speed controller and make sure it's facing the correct way now the correct way is going to be like this here with the battery leads in the back of the quadcopter so this should be at the back and it's very important you do that unless you know what you're doing so this should be in the back so your back right motor would go to these three your front right motor would go to those three and you get the whole idea here so this should be installed in your quadcopter like this with the camera in front then you go ahead and bring in your flight controller and you do have these pins that are going to connect and when you're connecting these really just take it easy don't force them to go right in and because it's really easy to bend them so keep that in mind they also do provide you with metal screws to keep everything properly secured in case of a crash which is really nice and they give you some extra wires here for your video transmitters uh, routing because the video transmitter doesn't have any pins on it and it's just soldered uh, just pads the solder onto here so once you plug in the flight controller into the ESC you'll see the arrow here and that arrow means it should be pointing towards your camera so it should be installed just like this with the usb on the left here so now we're going to go ahead and cover the video transmitter connection the receiver connection whether you're using fr sky or ibus and we're also going to be covering the camera connection as well so let's go ahead and get started here so we're going to first start off with the camera so now let's go ahead and start off with the camera connection now what's really nice also they really thought this through the camera connection is going to be in the front of the stack especially on tiny builds this is really great so you don't have to run a wire all the way back here and then these wires have to go to the front so it's going to be in these three on the right side right here so the black wire of your camera is going to go right there next over we have the red which is going to be the five volt for your camera which is going to be the second one over and then on this pad right here which is going to be the third one from the right is going to be the video signal which is going to be the yellow wire from your camera now the next one over would be buzzer so this would be the buzzer minus right here and then you would want to take five volt from here to allow the buzzer to go ahead and beep if you needed that and also we have our led signal wire which would be connected right here if you wanted to set that up but there's really no need because there's leds all over uh this esc or this stack i should say and the video transmitter which is something really nice to have here so for camera we're basically done here now the next thing we want to cover is the video transmitter now the video transmitter is very important if you're using the same one that's provided which again is highly recommended um which takes five volts so basically any video transmitter that takes five volts will be connected the same way i'm showing you now however if you're using a video transmitter that does not take five volts and it needs something much more then you're gonna have to do something different and we're gonna cover that as well right here so first of all we'll start out with the five volt connection setup here and that's going to be right here it's going to be these three pads mostly and the first one on the right side is going to be the black wire for your video transmitter which is the ground the next one down is going to be the five volt which is the red wire and this one is going to be your video line which is the yellow wire and for smart audio you're going to want to connect it to this pad right here smart audio or the tramp protocol and this would be tx2 so uart2 would be set up to do your video transmitter uh protocol next we have an rx2 pad which you should not use if you're using smart audio because it'll render it useless so you could ignore this one and the last two here what we have is we have a 3.3 volt regulator and as well as a ground pad on that last one right here so now we're going to go ahead and cover the receiver we're going to cover again both fr sky s bus or free sky s bus and fly sky i bus we'll start with the fr sky or free sky s bus here so the first and most important thing is obviously always power and you would take those from the first two pads right here this one right here on the bottom left is going to be the ground which would be the black wire for your i bus or s bus receiver the next one over is the 5 volt which is the red wire which is going to be either for both i bus or s bus 
And then this one right here, this is where it gets really important to take note of. This is RX1, and this will go only for SBUS, FR Sky SBUS signal. So this is where the data will come in from your remote transmitter in order to control the quadcopter. Now, if you're using FlySky, which is iBus, then you're going to want to go to this pad right here. And again, it is RX1 as well. So this is an inverted RX1 for SBUS, and this is the regular RX1 for iBus. And then here on the last one, we have a non-inverted TX1 if you needed it for something else. And that basically covers everything about the flight controller. So now we move along to the video transmitter. So on the video transmitter part, depending on what stack you're going to be putting it in, then you're going to want to break them, break off these accordingly to whatever you're using or you're setting up right now. So you can see it fits 30 by 30. Next hole over is 20 by 20. The last one's going to be 25 by 25 or 25.5 by 25.5, which is a crazy B type boards here. Now, how would we connect this to the flight controller? Well, if we flip it over, it'll tell us exactly whatever, where everything needs to go. So here we have five volts and we already mentioned where do we get the five volts from, which would be this pad right here. So this pad right here would be five volts, the second one down from the right, and that's gonna go right there. Next one is ground, which is going to be this pad right here. And maybe I should unplug the ESC real quick. All right, so we said five volts is the second pad down, which will go to the first pad here. Ground is going to be connected to this one right here. And then down here is going to be the video. So it's going to be this video line right here, which is the third one. This one down here is going to be the TX2, as I believe. And the TX2 is going to be going to the RX right there. Because that'll allow you to change the output power and channel through your on-screen display without having to come on this uh, video transmitter and start holding the button and pressing the button in order to get the channel you want now you see we're also still left with one more pad which is called led and where you want to probably grab this wire from is you would if you wanted to set this up if you wanted the leds to light up on the video transmitter you take that wire and you're going to want to go ahead and run it all the way to the top left pad right there which we covered earlier so this would be to the led pad and then the video is going to be the third one here and then the RX is going to be the fourth one on this side, which is, I think, that one. Then the ground is going to be this top one. This one's going to be the 5 volt, and it's going to be right there. And basically, you have a working quadcopter. However, there's something you need to take into consideration. Never boot this whole thing up without installing your antenna, or you might fry and or damage your video transmitter and if none of those two happen you have definitely lost some range so be careful when powering these video transmitters on or the whole quadcopter before uh, putting on your antenna so always keep that in mind make sure all your antennas are connected and well that's going to conclude it for this video guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it everything is linked down below let me know what you think and i'll see you in the next one guys peace out